Alright guys, how's it going? We're finally at a live table here and we're gonna have some action, hopefully. Hopefully, I recognize a lot of these guys. Um, some solid names here. Texas Auction Man. This, this is somebody you, you're never happy to see at the table. Um, who else do I see? Mike5969. This guy is uh, just brutal. Uh, but, you know, I'm not scared. I'm, I'm never scared when I sit at a table. I'm, I'm always looking forward. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and I got to do the most with my blessings. And that's um, just, you know, just go in there and start penetrating. Uh, really just start penetrating these guys and just make them make them hurt so I mean <clears throat> obviously I don't have enough time to explain uh, my normal strategy um, well not not explain but to sh I can't show it to you because I mean normally I s when I log on to full tilt I mean I usually have to warm up you know it's it's just like an athlete you don't want to get in there you don't want to stress something you don't want to pull a muscle you gotta you gotta warm up and so what I usually do is I play a few um, free rolls before I hit the high stakes and what this allows me to do is to get all my jitters out it allows me to practice some plays it allows me to see how am I running okay maybe um, maybe I bust out of these free rolls really fast and it's just you know coolers and then, you know, I might decide today I'm not going to be playing my high stakes games. On the other hand, maybe I enter a free roll with 2,700 players and maybe I make the final table, you know. And five hours later, I mean, I'm on fire, you know. Everything's going my way and I take it down. I take the free roll down and then I know, you know, I realize that, you know, today's my day and let's go let's go play at the higher levels um, and sometimes hell maybe you know maybe I win that free roll and you know what now I, I'm satisfied I don't need to I don't need to gamble I mean that's that and then I don't even need to play high stakes but I mean in general you want to warm up so okay we got a, like a seven way flop here and I have a flush draw I'm getting good odds but I, I want to semi bluff this because if I semi bluff it I can just take it right down okay if I'm calling I'm becoming too passive okay we need to keep up the aggression we raised pre-flop now we raise on the flop and now we get into these opponents head okay Texas auction man I mean this guy he knows he knows that I'm capable of doing a lot of stuff and uh, and I know he's capable of doing a lot of stuff as well so I mean we're leveling here uh, this is a classic case of leveling I mean he sees me bet 32 in a 600 I'm betting a slightly over 1 20th and see and now now he's putting his moves on me so I mean this is where history between opponents comes into play I mean spots like this this is this is what makes Helmuth a legend okay and this is what makes most online players just dreamers and there it is we miss but we set ourselves up for the bluff now he only flats us on the turn which he's telling me he doesn't have the nut flush there um, but it's it's he could easily have the queen high flush or the ten high flush, in which case we want to fold them out. Amazing, simply amazing. Time and time again, these guys. They play top pair like it's the nuts. But you know what? We just got to suck it up and move on. So this video, I have two goals. 
One goal is to speak clearly and well. A lot of times when I make videos, I use the word um or I mean. Well, the word um is a word. I mean is more of a phrase. And so hopefully I'll be able to avoid this and we'll be able to have a nice, clear video. My second goal is to kind of introduce gears. This is something that good players use to their advantage. And this is something that poor players have not developed yet. And so I feel if I can introduce gears to you guys, you guys can boost your bankrolls, you guys can start taking shots at bigger games, and essentially, in the end, everybody wins. So, the Silk, I mean, this dude, he's leading out here, and I'm switching gears here. I'm trying to find out some information. Is he capable of firing on turn? If he is, do I call, do I fold? This is, this is all information that I learn. And I see here that he's not capable of firing here, so I can't just give up here. And I bet slightly over one-tenth pot now. And at this point, we're done with the hand. We need to abort. Okay, we switch from the aggressive gear back to the the tighter gear. And he leads. I mean, we can't fold for 150. Uh, we're getting, like, great implied odds here. And he takes it down. He makes a great value bet. Excellent. 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 So we've been very active, um, which is okay, you know? I'm here to not only to win money, but also to set up my image for the next time I face these opponents. Because if they see me, if they see me blow through my stack in, you know, a span of five minutes, ten minutes, that's going to send a message to them they're gonna think oh well this guy he's wild he's out of control we we're gonna you know we're gonna sit down next time we see him at the table because we know we can make money and right here this is what dreams are made of as Brian Townsend would say this is just magic uh, hopefully we can check it through here Ah, uh, damn it. I mean, this guy's killing the action here. My plan was check it down till the river and then go for the value. Let these players catch up. But, I mean, this guy leads into us. What can we do? We can't fold yet. We can't raise yet. We have to call. So, I mean, when it comes to gears you have to ask yourself first of all how many gears do I have most players don't know how many gears they have so I mean you gotta get a pen and paper and you gotta you gotta brainstorm you gotta dig deep inside yourself and find out how many gears do you have and I mean I found out when I was young when I was 17 that I had four gears and eventually as I became a better player those gears just increased it was five gears, it was six gears, it was seven gears, so on and so forth. Okay, so I mean, this is a standard spot for a slow roll because we get in their brains. Okay, we have to min raise here and hope that they put us in, and then we tank. Unfortunately, I only have 10 seconds on my time bank. Ideally, oh, uh, shh. This is amazing. In fact, I'm only going to call here. I'm going to leave myself with 35. That just makes the slow roll so much better. <sighs> I mean, but, I mean, that's that. That's slow rolling. Um, we're here to talk about gears. And, and our straight only improves here. This is just magical. 
So, I mean, when it comes to gears, the more gears you have, the better, because your players aren't going to be able to tell exactly, you know, what gear you're on. And let's just time this down as much as possible. Oh, man. So much pressure. <laughs> Little does he know that we have a straight here. Oh boy. He's going to remember that one. Oh man. Excellent player. I think not. Okay, so I mean we just doubled, <coughs> excuse me, we just doubled up. Now we can really put the screws onto these guys. I'm going to switch up my gears here. I'm going to go to my ladder gears, okay? Ladder gears are gears that are high up on the ladder, okay? I mean I'm elevated. I'm up there. I mean this is either like the ninth or 10th gear here. Oh, we flop a pair, which is always good, but our kicker is not in play here. I will guarantee you that our kicker is not good. Um, so that leaves us with two options. Either we give up, or I mean we fire here. And I'm going to fire here. I mean, normally I bet 30. I think we should jack it up to 700. Double pot. And I mean, I'm getting away if I get shoved on here. Simple as that. Amazing. We take it down. Amazing. And I, I, I'm in my groove right now. Um, this is where I like to be. I mean... Oh, damn it. I just said I mean. I didn't mean to. I swear. Um, oh, damn it. Now I just said, um. Okay, I mean, hopefully this is not going to affect my video, but I feel like I'm off my game now because I was so focused. Everything was going good, and then just like that, I make a few verbal mistakes, and things can really turn on a dime here. So, I mean, this is just an example of how crazy things can become at the poker table, especially when you're playing such high stakes every second it's a challenge but we're gonna fight through it and uh... maybe i might pause the video and ask my... well i don't even need to pause it mom mom do we have any lunchables And we're good here, probably, most of the time, so I'm just value betting. Uh, if we have ham, I'll go ham. And he raises us. We have a pair. We're getting fabulous odds. And we call his bluff. Um, you know, when you're getting those odds, you cannot fold. Yeah, ham. Yeah, I'll take I'll take ham. All right. A lunchable coming on the way. It helps me focus when I can get my mind off off the negativity and eat a lunchable because it reminds me of my youth and uh just how golden those years were when I was eating lunchables every day and I mean I'm eating Lunchables now every day so it's just beautiful so Sir Junior here he's gonna he's gonna do a little re-raise 
Now we can extract by min raising. If we shove, we'll scare him off. So this is just an extraction play. We're trying to price him in here. And frankly, I'm not really sure who he is. I would slow roll here, but we don't have the time bank. I'm afraid we used it all up. We got one second, but I don't want to gamble with one second because you go too long, it'll time out. So, I mean, I'm not going to Hollywood here, and we're flipping coins. Little does he know that we were flipping coins. I'll take an 8 or a 10. And if this guy wants to flip coins, you know, he should go down the street because I'm not here to flip coins. You know, you want to flip coins, go play blackjack, go play chess. Go play badminton. You can flip coins all you want. But it's a losing play. So now we're the chip leader. Oh, we probably were the chip leader already. Now we're even more of the chip leader. And this guy shoves. This guy shoves, and we're the chip leader. Now two things go through my mind in this spot. Does he have aces? Or is he full of it? When he shoves like this, it makes me think. He's probably strong. He's probably strong. And I'll tell you why. Because I, I have a read on him. I haven't seen him gone, go out of line. I'm using my reads. Okay? With Texas Auction, man, I already know what this guy's thinking, what he's doing. And now he shoves again. He shoves twice in a row. Now he's now he's tilting, and I have to call, man. I have to keep this guy honest. Otherwise, nobody's gonna, everybody's gonna be afraid of him. If I keep him honest, these guys are gonna wake up. They're gonna say, "Holy mackerel!" And he has a jack seven. I called his hand out. Jack seven? <laughs> are you kidding me? Jack seven? Jesus. These guys just don't learn. <sighs> In a way, I feel almost sorry for them. Because they think they're playing well. Each morning, they tell their wives that they're, they're just living the dream. You know, they're, their neighbors, they think that, that these are serious people at the poker table. And here we got ace eight suited. I'm not gonna go broke with a suited drawing hand. Not in this spot. And these people, they're not they're not what they think they are. They think you can you think you can shove Jack Seven? You think you can do that? I just called you and you lost. Cause I knew you were bluffing. Oh damn. I should have called. I mean, you can't you can't win them all. You just can't. Whew, that's all right. Thanks. Can can I get some juice also? My throat is just What do we have? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a Capri Sun. Okay, so we're chopping here, and we miss. Ten would have chopped it for us. And I was keeping this guy honest. I play with Texas so much. He reminds me of... <sighs> Raptor, in some ways. In other ways, he, rind he reminds me of Phil Hellmuth. Uh, this guy is capable of making amazing folds. He's also capable of mixing it up, just like Raptor. So, and I'm gonna squeeze here. I limp squeeze. This is just a play most people aren't expecting. They're not expecting you to cold call and then do the re-raise. And we hit. We hit everything. 
We hit two back draw back doors and we hit the flush draw. Question is do we open shove here or do we slow play? This guy's coming in strong. Okay? I don't want to get him off his hand. I don't want him to think that we flopped a set of aces. When I raise, he thinks we're strong. And he folds. We have to call here. <laughs> now, now, now this is a difficult spot. I mean, anything I do looks strong. If he bets and I call, it looks strong. If he checks and I bet, it looks strong. If he checks and I check, it looks strong. What do I do? I don't know. I can't fold. I have to call. I have to. And an amazing river. This is an amazing river. And this is just going to be golden because right as I'm going to call him, my mother's going to bring me a Capri Sun. And it's just going to mean the world to me. Everything is in line. It's like an eclipse. It's what it's what magic is. I wish I could slow roll him even more, but I can't. Jeez. These guys are going broke like it's nothing. Oh, God. Have mercy on them. As you guys have seen, I've just been on autopilot on my upper ladder gear. And at this point, I haven't been discussing my gears too much because I haven't been changing them. I only changed them slightly um, about two hands ago when I folded the ace, I think it was nine, ace nine suited. I went from an upper ladder gear down to a mid-level gear. And here we flop. Jeez, uh, I gotta go 6,000. I'm trying to fold out any any worse hands that can catch up there, okay? I don't want somebody with 810 offsuit calling because he can easily suck out on me. I could shove here, but I can also call. You know, it's a really it's one of those, you know, Daniel Negreanu type of deals, you know? You can either do this or you can do that. And we induce the shove. Magic. Simply magic. He's drawing thin. <coughs> and he's out of here. So as you can see, my opponent, who had a good history, he made an awesome play because he knew that there's a chance that I have Queen Jack and he knew that if he shoves he can fold me out <laughs> I wish I wish I ran this good every single day oh wait I do <laughs> man these guys are just and I made a mistake there I tried to induce the shove Oh, and now these guys are they're getting angry. Yeah. Reality finally sets in. So we flop here. Generally this is a good board texture to slow play with the king high simply because chances are he doesn't hit and we didn't hit but we have the best kicker. There, I try to play it a little fast. I'm still on my gear. I'm trying to slow down, but I just can't. And we take it down again. You see, these mid-stakes players, they're playing on the lowest gears. 
they're not thinking too much they think okay I have jacks I'll play them okay I have ten jacks suited I'll play it okay I have ace four off suit I'll fold that's the level these guys are thinking on and the level I'm thinking on is okay he has jack ten suited he'll probably raise it so I already know what he is doing I can now exploit this I can now exploit this I can now fold I can now raise and this guy shoves here and we're drawing to three outs and we hit we're drawing to three outs and we hit there's nothing more to it okay you're gonna get into spots where you're drawing where you have a draw whether it's a pair draw whether it's a set draw whether it's a two pair draw okay I don't care if there's back doors I don't care if there's flush draws I don't care it comes down to playing your draws and getting paid off 88 we're gonna play with his brain here make him think that we have a set and it, it works like a miracle we're on the bubble now these guys are under extreme pressure because they see me slowly inserting myself into every single player in out in out I'm playing with their brains but at the same time I'm building my stack and you need to understand the fear the fear that these players face well, we get we get a premium pocket pair and this guy's gonna call we're gonna try to extract three streets of value here and he shoves whoa we need to hit back doors here whoo I mean we were drawn thin there I'll admit it we needed running threes and the last time I hit running threes was about two months ago so I, I did not expect to win that pot I'll be honest with you I did not and this is a, just a shell shocker these guys are just auto folding everything one two three four I can shove here and I have to use my position. I have to use my position. If I don't shove there, he's going to be exploiting me. I can't give him that leeway. I got to shove again. I have to. And if he calls, so be it. We'll flip coins. I'm not here to flip coins, but if he wants to, I'll, I'll start flipping coins. I have two thumbs. now we're getting into their brain they're thinking can I shove one last time can I do it I can I have to and now we get the premium pocket pair now when they're expecting the shove we call now I let them hang themselves what's he gonna do if he's gonna raise if he's gonna bet it doesn't matter if he's gonna fold it though oh and there it is we need to hit and we miss you hit some you miss some if you're constantly playing pots if you're always in there it's gonna happen it's a high variance game so now is the time to discuss changing your gears we've lost some momentum I mean sure we've hit here we got the back doors but at the same time our stack has been going down albeit they weren't big pots but they were pots nonetheless so we have to regroup we have to take a deep breath and we put ourselves in gear 
and I'm going to fold here. I have to switch up my gears. I'll let him have that one. I'll be honest. I'll let him have that one. But do it again, and I'm going to switch my gears back. We're in the lower mid gears now. We went from the upper ladder gears to the mid level gears. We're now in the lower mid gears. I'm not thinking too much. I'm acting like a wolf. I'm acting like a wild animal. I'm using my instincts slowly, gently. I raise slowly, gently. I call slow and gentle like a wild animal who's who's just minding his own business just living amongst nature okay and we hit our draw here I'm gonna semi bluff and if he would have shoved I would have snapped him in a second because I realize he's capable of putting in a raise And now we're slightly going to switch up the gears, but we're doing it slowly and gently. We keep on hitting back doors, and the question now is, do we shove? Do we check? Do we bet a small amount? And I'm going to put them to the test. I'm going to put it in for a thousand here. And if he comes over the top, well, I was going to say, if he comes over the top, I'm folding, but I just read the note on him. He doesn't know what I'm capable of. He doesn't know what I'm capable of. I have to exploit that. And now we're switching gears again. We're, we're getting even more aggressive. And this guy, you know, he's been impressive. Because he's been folding to my raises and he's just being patient and I gotta give him credit for that okay at this level in his career he could be making a ton of mistakes and he's not he's just playing solid poker oh we flop a pair here we're gonna check it S try to see what's happening here and our kicker improves okay because now, if the board pairs, we will actually be playing the king as a kicker. Oh. I wish I could bet 20, but I can only bet 100. Uh, it's pretty pathetic. And the river is no help to us. I gotta follow up with my bluff. And if he check raises... I'll be thoroughly confused. But luckily for me, he didn't do anything crazy there. Well, this guy's pretty active, so I gotta... I gotta... have that... fact in the back of my mind we miss our turn at this point we can either give up we probably have the best hand we can bluff if we have the worst hand and he shoves we we we're beat here i have to fold so this guy <sighs> questionable questionable whether or not he's good or not <laughs> oh, that feels good. That feels real good. Now we're just going to call here. And if this guy shoves, I mean, I might have to change my underwear. Oh. Oh, <laughs> we pick up the flush draw. Amazing. Simply amazing.
and we hit. Amazing. Amazing that this guy just went crazy there. On that turn, I probably would have folded. And I mean, now we're down to this guy. Uh, this guy doesn't know what I'm capable of. And we're, we're down to this tight, aggressive player. And he checks. Right off the bat, he checks. I want to see what he's going to do. He checks again. This is amazing. We pick up a draw. He checks again. I'm going to try to induce the bluff by him. I hit my ace. And he checks it through. King 7. So I was in I was correct in thinking I can induce a bluff, but he, I should have known he's he's too solid. He's not going broke there. He's too solid. And here we're raising it with a suited connector. And he wants no part of it. Maybe he does know what we're capable of. Hence he he's folding. You know what? I think he knows what I'm capable of. Will be interesting if I meet him again. And I'm just going to shove here. And he insta mucks. This this player is amazing. He's and I'm going to do it again. At this point at this point, we're trying to bust these players. And we're doing it slowly. But it's simply amazing that this player is making so many solid folds. Um, most players don't. Raise. I have to protect my big blind here, or else he'll start exploiting me. What's he going to do? Is he going to shove? He's going to fold. By raising there, I make it look like I have aces. I make it look like I have kings, queens. And this guy becomes scared. And I'm sh just shoving here. I'm not even thinking. I'm just shoving. Because even though this guy is solid, I'm more solid. I'm better than him. And there it is. We hit our we hit our back doors and let's just get it in here. All in. Let's get it in. What are you made of? Are you made of victory or failures? And he's got he's got a good hand. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's just unreal. Unreal. This guy sucks out like that. God, I hope I don't tilt off my stack here. I mean, all I have to do is double this guy up about 16 times. I don't want to do anything stupid here. I don't want to fold, but I don't really want to be playing this hand. And this is why. I mean, I flop two, I flop three unders. He can easily have two of them, and I'm beat. But I have to find out where I'm at. I can't slow play it this time. I have to find out. And he, oh God, he calls me. This is just sick. This is sick. And we hit a good river. I can't bear it. Wow. Wow, we were good. I was not expecting that. He had jack seven. Had I known he had jack seven, I would have probably checked three streets. 
just so I can advertise, just so I can show them, you know, this is what I have. And we get it in poorly here, but at the same time we got a lot of outs. And this guy doubles up. I was afraid that he might start doubling up. But when you're playing at this level, you gotta keep your mind off that. You don't want to be afraid. You want to be brave. And here I pick up a gut shot plus backdoor flushes. I'm gonna shove here. Hope he calls. It's just a waiting game now. And we get our money in perfectly good. He's drawing thin and he misses. We take it down. And now we're down to my heads up specialty. Playing against players. Heads up. I mean, that's my specialty. <sighs> you guys probably. And he shoves. Rookie mistake. Classic. He gets his money in dominated. We're in good shape. And we lose. So, I mean, this guy's. You know, he's sucking out. He's sucking out on us. We're not going to. Uh, I, I go all in. Hopefully, you guys will understand that heads up is a different game. And he loses here. He gets what he deserves. He tried to outplay us. He couldn't. Game over. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's how you beat sit and goes at will. See you guys.